Hello there, this is Toby and welcome back to this series where we create a small programming language called Smallang. We're going to create it uh, step by step and uh, you are going to follow along. Last time uh, we have created a parser. We built the parser using the nearly.js tool. This is the nearly file that we have created and we're able to compile this file into a JavaScript version of the grammar, which then we wrote a parse.js, which is able to take a file in the small programming language, parse it, and then output another file called the .ast file. The acronym AST stands for abstract syntax tree, which is a very detailed description of the syntax of your program. Basically, this object here is a description of this one line of code, right? It's saying, what is this one line of code? Well, it is a variable assignment, a var assign. It's assigning to this variable name, which is an identifier with the value of name, and it's assigning to it the value over here, which is something of type string, whose value is the string Jackie. So this is a very detailed description of this one line of code. And for every line of code that we're going to write in this programming language, there has better be a detailed description of that code in the form of an AST, okay? So in this episode, we're gonna do the same thing, uh, but we're gonna do it for the function call syntax. You, you have the name of the function, left parenthesis, and then a list of values, and then a right parenthesis. Uh, I decided to omit the comma in this language. A sort of subtle stylistic choice there I made. You can follow my lead or you can disregard it and decide to add in commas if you want. That's up to you. So the goal for this episode is to be able to parse this file and come up with an AST. Uh, if you're feeling confident, I would actually recommend that you try to do this on your own and then only using my video as a reference later on. Or if you prefer to just follow me step by step, that's totally fine as well. Okay, let's go into it. Let's say it was just like this, simpler to begin with. Previously, a statement could only be a var sign. Now we're saying, well, a statement can also be a function call, which I'm going to abbreviate as fun call. I know some people really don't like abbreviations. Uh, I'm okay with them. I, <laughs> it helps me go faster and I'm sticking with it. You feel free to deviate from what I do if it's not your preference. I'm gonna add a definition for fun call after that. And a fun call starts with an identifier. And uh, usually programming languages do allow optional white space in between here although I tend to not put it there, but I, I will allow it. And then we're gonna have a uh, left friend, which I'm gonna write the string literal for. And then we're gonna have a argument list, which I'm gonna shorten it to arc list. Uh, we might have optional white space on either side of the argument list, and that's a function call. Let's write our converter here for our function call while we're at it. So we're gonna get a data into our converter and then I want to return an object that properly represents this function call. I'm going to say that it's going to have a type of fun call and it's going to have a fun name. It's going to have a function name, which I'm going to get from this identifier token, which is going to be at data index zero. And I want to grab this argument list. Maybe call it arguments. What index is that in? Well, we have to count. <laughs> we have to count because remember this guy is an array. Each symbol is an element in the array here. And this is gonna be zero, this is one, this is two, three, four. So arglist is four. Um, and then we're gonna define what arglist is. There's multiple ways to do a repeating thing here, and I might show the various ways. Way number one is to use recursion, and if you use recursion, left recursion is much preferred. You can say, well, an arglist is an expression 
or is an arc list uh, some mandatory white space and then another expression. So this allows multiple arguments to resolve into this arc list. So that means if you have an argument list, like let's say you have a function call like add one one, well the one becomes an expression based on this rule here. And then this expression gets resolved as being an arc list. And then there's a white space here, and then this one gets resolved into an expression. Now this rule is able to put this and this and this together, whole thing together, and make that another arc list. And that's how we can use recursion to repeatedly list a bunch of things, <laughs> to, to repeat things. Yeah. Alternative way to do it is to do write recursion. However, write recursion is much less performant with the early parsing algorithm, which is the one that Nearly.js uses. So if you're using Nearly.js, then left recursion should always be preferred. However, if you're using a different parser tool, you should be aware that the opposite may very well be true in another tool. I'm going to go with this solution and then later on I might actually talk about alternative way of doing it. So I'm going to add converters for both of these guys. Uh, actually for the expert I'm just going to use id because there's only one symbol here. No, 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 actually I reverse my decision. Uh, for expert, even for expert I want to write a converter list because what I would like to do is have an array represent an arc list, which makes sense because it's in list. So I actually want the array. So I'm going to say I'm going to take the data, which is an array that contains just that guy, and I return another array that contains just the zeroth element, which is that expression. But in the case where we're having a recursion and combining something that's already an array with something that's not an array, I'm going to basically combine the two into a single array by first spreading the result of that onto this array, which this spread operator, if you're not familiar, just takes all the, off the contents of that array, which we're assuming data index zero is an array because that does satisfy it and we're gonna make this satisfy it. So this is an array, we're copying all of them onto this outer array. But then we're gonna add on this guy, which is gonna be data index two. Okay, so that's our arg list, and that's what we're giving into the argument list for a function call. And we're saying a statement can be a variable assigned or a function call. So I think we have enough to parse this program, I believe. I'm gonna regenerate the parser. And then now I'm gonna run the parse.js on this second example, example two. That small and it parsed it and generated this example to AST. And here it is. This is a fun call with the fun name of an identifier that has the value of print. And the argument list looks like that has one argument in it. It says hello world. Let's change it to have two arguments perhaps. Parse it again. And now it has two arguments and that looks good to me. Uh, what if it has no arguments? What happens then? We have a parse error and that's a problem. The syntax of this arc list doesn't allow a nothing. That's kind of a problem. How do you match a nothing? Well, in nearly JS, you can match a nothing with a null symbol. So we could actually do this. We could actually say, well, it's a null. And if we have done this, we might not even need this because a null would just be matched as an arg list, and then there would be some white space and then an expert. It'll, it'll take this empty array and put it here. So I'm thinking we may not even need this. Let's see if this works. I'm gonna regenerate the parser. Uh, oh, I forgot to write this arrow function that needs to wrap around this return statement. Regenerate the parser and run it. Now it actually does work. It has zero arguments. And if we go back to the two arguments case, does it also work? No, now it doesn't work again. Why is that? Let's try to diagnose this problem. It's saying I was confused 
when I saw a string token here. Instead, I was expecting a white space token. Oh, I see. Null, by the way, matches the empty string. So there's nothing here and it already matched null. So it says, oh, nothing is already an arg list. But then it was looking for this mandatory white space here, which it never found. So if we put some white space here, then this would parse, yeah, and it did. But that's not what we want. We want this to be allowed as well. So how are we gonna fix that? Let's think about it. Um, so one way I have done this in the past is first revert to the version where I have this arc list, which basically has one or more arguments and then allow another version of this function call that just has an empty list. So I'm gonna make a copy of this and I'll allow this version to just not have an argument list and then just say the argument is an empty array. So this way does work. I'll run the parser, generate the parser again and see that this does work. Um, so it should satisfy all cases where it has two arguments has one argument, there's the one argument, and has zero arguments. Yep, all three cases work. There's, I think it's a slightly less tedious way to do this, which is I can make part of this optional by surrounding these two things, which are the optional bits, and then do a colon and a question mark. A uh, question mark is similar to regular expressions, question mark syntax, it says that guy is optional. And if we done this, uh, then the thing inside this guy is again wrapped inside of an array, uh, which can be kind of confusing because we already have this massive array wrapping going on here but we're gonna wrap the two things inside in yet another array, which is this. But this array may or may not exist because this guy is optional. So th the, the thing in here might be null or undefined. Uh, but if it's not null or undefined, then it's an array with two things in it. So that's what you have to be aware of if you're using this optional syntax. So I'm gonna show you this working. Uh, you pick the technique that you prefer. Let's see. This is index zero, this is one, this is two, this is three, and this whole thing now is index four. But index four may not exist. So I'm gonna say, well, if it does exist, then I'm gonna get at the zeroth index within the subarray that is the thing in index four, which is that guy. But if index four does not exist, I want the argument simply to be an empty array. So yeah, so now I don't have to repeat this big old block twice. I'm gonna regenerate the parser, parse it again, and see that this works for uh, all three cases. So there's the one argument, and there's the three arguments. Okay, so that is good. Um, Finally, I'm gonna allow for multiple lines. So what if I have a name, which is Bob, and I wanna say hello to Bob, referenced by that variable name. Well, currently, this won't parse because we don't have the syntax to allow for multiple statements yet. How do we allow for multiple statements? Well. Again, we can use the left recursion trick. Let me call this statements plural. Statements can either be a single statement or it can be a bunch of statements, a new line token, and then another statement. This definition will be slightly limiting, but let's go with this first, and then we'll fix the shortcomings of this a little bit later. But uh, let's regenerate the parser. I believe now, ooh. I see, unexpected identifier token name, but it was expecting a string or a number, just not an identifier. I think that's because uh, we haven't allowed an expression to be an identifier, which we really should allow. So we'll do that. Regenerate the parser and parse it again. And there it is. Um, we forgot to write the converter for our statements. So we'll do a similar thing 
to this arc list here where we pick this data, have both rules return an array in both cases. This case returns an array and that case returns an array with this combinator. So this is going to take in the data. Here we'll return a array that just contains this one element here and here we'll write another converter. And here again we want to return an array but this time combining this guy and this guy. Uh, here we'll use the spread operator to take this guy and copy it into this outer array. And then we take this guy and also put it into this array. Now let's regenerate the parser and reparse it. And now we have the AST and now we're able to have multiple statements in the same program. Uh, the program is now represented as an array of objects, each object representing a statement in the program. Okay, so we're, we're getting somewhere here. We are able to parse a very simple program that looks like this. And uh, I think in the next video, we'll actually start uh, getting into building a generator that will take this AST structure and generating some working JavaScript code that represents this program. So I'll see you next time.